Welcome to Mark's Madness alongside Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, week six, we've got a lot to get to. Lots of yeah, great storylines coming down the stretch here in the high school football season. And let's jump right in. We've right. talked about it a lot so far here on Mark's Madness, the NWC and the strength of that conference. And they delivered again this week some great finishes in the Northwest they Conference. They had three games went right down to the wire. You know, Spencerville has to recover an onside kick. Ada down 21, scores 28 in the fourth quarter, and then blocks a PAT to get the win there. And then the game of the week, of course, is Crestview and, and Allen East. That was a great one. We're going to take a look at how that game came to an end, that Crestview Allen East game later in the show when we break down a play. But overall, just great games in that conference. And Spencerville remains undefeated. LCC, this is a non-conference matchup now, but it did hand Jefferson its first loss of the season and in that NWC. So where do we sit in that conference? What are we looking for going forward? Well, you know, you got the two undefeated still there. And Jefferson is, is uh, well, I guess you still got the three undefeated. That's all going to shake out here in the next couple of weeks in as they start right. playing each other in yes. conference. That's right. Got the two that are 5-0 and oh overall, Crestview and Spencerville. Uh, but, you know, they're going to start to play each other, and that will crystallize. But even aside from that, these are playoff teams, you know, so they want to keep the momentum. They can't get, you know, I know every kid wants to go undefeated and win the league, but it doesn't happen. Take a note out of the MAC playbook, and that is even if you don't win the league, you can still win the state championship. They've done it before. All right. Well, huge game here in Lima this mm. week. Lima senior, 5-0, and oh, first time since 1989, 25 years, hosting Finley. Yeah. Also 5-0, and oh, first place on the track, first place in the track on the mm -hmm. line. And just what a, what a great storyline for the city of Lima. It really is because those are our two teams. You know, Lima Senior and Finley within our, our area. All those other teams, they're so far up there, we don't really know much about them. And, and they were all winning the league. They were the best teams. And, well, now it's flipped around a little bit. You know, Finley, they're rated, what, 12, Lima Senior 6 in their respective divisions. Very similar in a lot of ways. They have big playmakers. They have quarterbacks that can really throw it. They got big receivers that can really catch it. And they got a running back that can go the distance at any time. This could be, this could be in the 50s, 60s, who knows? You know, this could be a really high scoring game. The way the Spartans and the Trojans have been putting up points this year, I'm expecting a basketball score yeah. on the football field. Yeah, now. you're right. And Mark Ritzler, uh, Finley's coach, right after the game, they asked him about Lima Senior and he says, it's going to be like playoff. He says, I know it's going to be a packed feet stadium. They're looking at it like it's a playoff game. We do. It's a great rivalry. It's in the league. It's for the first place. There's a lot on the line for week six. But uh, this is why Mike Fell came back to Lima Senior right here. Games like this. That's and right. you'll be able to see it on WSN Saturday at 9 p.m. They say Spartan Stadium holds 2,000. I think that capacity is oh, going to yeah. be tested. Yeah, yeah. it'll be, a, it'll be a, a new stadium record for that part. That's for sure. They'll be standing around the fence. Speaking of big crowds, the MAC, mm -hmm. Coldwater and Marion Local, we're still a couple <laughs> weeks away from that mm -hmm. showdown. They remain undefeated. Yeah. But I think the big surprise right now is Fort Recovery. They're 4-1, yeah. and, one, and and are they for real? Do they have a chance of making the playoffs? Yeah, I think they are, and yes, they do. Because I looked at their, their future schedule. Uh, they play New Bremen next. Then they got to go to Minster. That's a tough one. they got Marion Local. That's really tough. Then they go to St. Henry and Versailles. You know, you look at that, and even if you're a little bit of a, a, a pessimist, you say there's four winnable games out of the last five. That puts them at, at uh, you know, eight and two. You know, that gets into the playoffs with the MAC. That gets you a home game in the MAC Absolutely. if you get in the playoffs. So I think they are for real. And, uh, you know, I think a couple other teams in the MAC can make the playoffs too. You know, there are so many, what do you say, eight teams right now, the winning record. Eight I don't think all eight is going to get in because they're going to play against each other and start beating each other up and taking points from each other. But I, you look at St. Henry and Anna, um, I think they've got a chance. St. Henry's already played Marion Local and Coldwater. You know, so anytime they go on the field, and they're they three field, and two right now. They're three and two. Anna's three and two. They got Marion Local this week, but they're already done with cold water. You look after that, and they've got winnable games. Not saying they're going to win them all, but they could. That gets five MAC teams into the playoff. That's kind of standard for them. Though. That's standard. Could be more. I mean, yeah. when you look at it, could be. with eight teams over 500, they are going to beat each other up, but who knows, yeah. who knows who's going to end up on top. And I like that the Fort Recovery Indians are sitting at third in the MAC right now at four and one. That's an exciting time for them. And they're playing well. Yep, they're playing well. So now let's go to the WBL. Mm -hmm. And Kenton and is now three and two. And Wapak and OG are atop the league undefeated at five and zero. Oh. Mm -hmm. And Kenton takes on OG this yeah. week. Another game you'll be able to see on WSN. We got a great, we're going to get to that later. Tons of great games this <laughs> yeah, week coming are. up week six. No. But the WBL is still kind of up in the air. We got the Wapak and OG undefeated. But Kenton, they started slow, remember, 0-2. Yeah. And now they've yeah. won three straight. Started with two very difficult teams. Could be two state 
championship type teams and and now they're starting to play the WBL teams and and they've got that thing going a little bit they've been together a little bit more the young quarterbacks finding his receivers a little bit more you know there was a lot of changes at Kenton you know not just with losing good players but losing head coaches offensive coordinators all that stuff yeah they're pretty good this is going to be a big one Kenton and OG this week and then OG and Wapak the following week We'll know after next week who's probably going to win the league. We're going to find out a lot yeah. over these next yeah. two weeks, and that's yeah. great. I, we lo we'll yeah. always look forward to those big games, especially yeah. in that competitive conference. Yeah. I, th I really think it's the big three right now. Uh, Salina, you know, if they play clean, they could rise up and upset one of those, but I don't think anybody else can beat those three teams. Should be interesting to yep. see how it turns out. Time for a break here on Mark's Madness. When we come back, we're going to look at the last five minutes of that Crestview Allen East game. It was a thriller that you saw here on WOSN, and we're going to break it down when we come back. Welcome back to Mark's Madness, and it's time to break down a play from last week's games. And we have chosen such a good one, Crestview Allen East. Mm -hmm. That NWC matchup came right down to the wire. And we pick it up in the fourth quarter, less than the four. Oh, oh, he's less than five minutes he is to play. Gone. Yeah, this is Logan Schick, and he gets the long touchdown run. Now, he was well over 100 yards and, and really had a great game, but that was uh, one that put him up. Here you're going to see just a, a dive up inside, doing a little cross blocking in front of him. And uh, nobody in the secondary, even for him to miss. They were up tight. He got behind them and was able to get in the end zone. So now Alan is going to go for two to try to make it a seven-point game. Well, a little rollout here. you got good protection in front. Going to slide a guy into the flat. And a juggling act. The referee is right on. It couldn't be any closer. Makes the good call, and the PAT is good. Going to see it again. You saw the guy off the right side of the screen just slip out into the flat behind the defender. I think the defender thought he had an interception. He missed the ball, the receiver caught it, two-point conversion is good. So now Crestview's down by seven with four minutes to go, and they went on a nice drive here, capped off by this play. Well, put it in the hands of Preston Zaleski, right? Fake the dive up inside, follow your, your lead back around the, the end, and he gets into the end zone. Now you got a decision to make. Look at that score. Right, you know, this is a replay, so you're going to see that they're down by seven. And are you going to kick it to tie it? You're on the road. Sometimes they say, we'll win it in overtime on the road. Just 30 seconds left. So they decide to go they for go two. They go for two. Good decision. You try to take the win when you got a chance on the road. And again, they put it in Preston's hands. He sees the crease, doesn't even follow his blockers, cuts up inside of his blockers, and gets into the end zone. That's the two-point conversion that put him up by one with 30 seconds to go, as Matt just said. There you can see the two blockers wanted to lead him around a corner. The receiver had a block, but Preston saw the crease. And don't doubt that kid. He knows how to get in the end zone. What a finish, what a game. Yeah. And a couple times yeah. this year we've seen coaches decide to go for two instead of kicking the extra point yeah. to tie. And both times on the yeah. road, I'm thinking of St. Yeah. Mary's at Elida. And, yeah. uh, or no, did well, Elida, excuse me. Did Elida, Elida tried to go for it. Yeah, Elida you know home. what, though? Yeah. They always say if you're on the road, try to win it. If you're home, go into overtime. The home crowd is in your favor. But you know what? If a coach thinks he's got a good play, yeah. go for it. If he makes it, it's a great call. If he doesn't, it's a bad call. That's just the way football is. And it worked out for the Knights yes, in this did. case. And a great finish. So thank you, Mark, for doing what you do so well. Time for another break on Mark's Madness. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some of those Week 6 games. And Mark has some awards to dole out here at the midseason. Stay with us. Welcome back to Mark's Madness, third and final down. And Mark, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. I mm -hmm. want to know, it's week five, or week five's done. It's week yeah. six, so we're mm -hmm. halfway through. Mm -hmm. I want to know your midseason awards. And we're going to start with the best right. top offensive player. Well, I'm so bad at predicting who's going to win. So, you know, you can't really go wrong because these, these kids are going to, ton, you know, ton deserve of great players anyway. to choose okay. from. All right, offensive player. And I always fudge a little bit. So I got two. All right. That's fine. Janiel Lyles, running back for Lima Senior. What a season he's yeah. having. And Preston Zaleski, the quarterback for Crestview. And, you know, Janiel, he's, he's, I mean, he's just unstoppable. You know, he had 19 yards in the first half against St. Francis. What did he finish with? He finished with 179. Unbelievable. You know, that's a mark of a really good player. You can scheme me for a half. Right. But then my coach is going to figure it out, and I'm going to run over you in the You're second half. You're not going to shut me down for a whole game. And Zaleski, I mean, he is the team. You know, they lost the running back that was kind of his, his running mate. He's kind of the thing. You know, he throws it and runs it a whole lot. He just kind of drops back and runs all over the place. We, we just you know, saw, we saw it, it on yeah. the play that just give him the ball. You know, he'll find a crease and get it in the end zone, which he did for the PAT and the touchdown. But right. those are my offensive players. You know, with, with special dispensation to Brody Hoyne, 
right. know, because he's been he injured, injured a couple of games. At and the end of the season, he'll be back up. He's still delivered when he's been in there. Yeah. How about on the defensive side of the ball? Well, the defensive side of the ball, I went with the defensive end, Marion Local, Jacob, Jacob Kunkler. I mean, he's play, having a great year again in that defense. My goodness gracious. They, they, uh, they played this last week and gave up 84 total yards, no rushing yards. Well, they gave up some, but the losses made zero. Right. I mean, that's a defense there. Wow. And then Tristan Reichel Durfer, I saw him. He's a linebacker at Kenton, saw him against Shawnee last week. He, he, he roams around, man. He makes plays, just makes a lot of tackles. So those are my defensive players, or co. Can't go wrong with either no, of those. No, good players. What about top coach? Well, Another, you, more good yeah, coaches yeah, to choose from. I, I put, initially, I put a lot because there are a lot of really good coaching jobs going on this year, and we could run eight or ten of them off right now, but we'll wait till the end. Um, but I, I, I'm going to give it to Chip Otten right now because he won at Minster and beat St. Henry without Brody Hoyne. Now he had Brody for two carries against St. Henry, and they were both touchdowns. But, you know, you take the player of the year in that division, set him on a sideline, put him on crutches for one week, and you still win against two quality opponents, that's good coach, and that's a good team. He's an experienced coach. He's, yeah. been, he's faced yeah. adversity before, and, and yeah. all those Cavalier players have, and, and they answered the call. Yeah. They answered the bell. What about your top team? All right. I put big school, little school. A big school halfway point team of the Let year. Let me guess. The Spartans? The Spartans. Yes. It's they, hard to argue with what they've done so far. Oh, my goodness. And they are exciting to watch. Small school is a little tougher for me yeah, to If you haven't seen out. them on air and if you haven't gone down, you got to see them play. Oh. I mean, they have they have weapons, man. They have really they are And then really my small school is Marion Local. How do you argue with them? You know, they've, they've won 132 state championships in a row, it seems, and, and they're you know, on the same pace again this year. And, and uh, Tim Goodwin just does a fabulous job down there with those guys. We always know what to expect from yep. them. What yep. about your under a radar team? Maybe we should watch out for that can make a deep playoff run that this maybe a, we're not looking at as seriously right now. This was a great question. It really made me think. I, I, I put Bluffton down because they are not a one in four team. I mean, they've played some really good teams. They've come very close and haven't won uh, as many as they, they deserve to. So I think they're going to finish stronger than they've started so far. And then I've got two three and two teams out of the MAC that because they've already played some tough teams in their leg, I think they might finish stronger. St. Henry, already done with Marion Local and Coldwater. I think they can win out, maybe. And I think Anna, they play Marion Local this week. The other four are winnable games for them. Those teams could both end 8-2-7-3, slide right on into the playoffs. So and we'll see. Having played against the MAC the whole season, who knows what they can accomplish That's in the right. playoffs. And They're certainly prepped. <laughs> yes. So, all right, well, great work. And we'll, yeah, we'll check you. back in uh, week 10, yeah, and see, we'll see how see you how did. See how close I was, huh? Now let's turn our attention to week six, and let, there's so many games. Where do you want to start, LB Arlington? <sighs> yeah, that'll be a great one. Uh, you know, the, the, for the people that follow football, you know that the v, BVC split it into, they added some teams split into two divisions. Well, unfortunately, Arlington, Macomb, Liberty Bend, all in the same division. They're all you in know, the, the same division. You know, the other division's a little bit weaker, at least this year. That'll ebb and flow. All in the blanch. That's going to be a great game. You know, we're going to find out. You know, which of those teams uh, has the foot up on that division, that the side to play for that championship. You know? And then you also mentioned we could see some undefeateds fall this, this week as well. Yeah, you know, we got LCC at Spencerville. LCC is very good. Spencerville's 5-0. and Jefferson at Crestview. Jefferson got their first loss. Can they give Crestview their first loss? That would be a league loss, you know. Uh, Anna at Marion Local. You know, Anna's pretty good. Can they beat Marion Local at Marion Local? Tall order, but maybe another undefeated falls. Uh, Kenton at OG. You know, that, there have been battles through the years. OG's yeah. undefeated. Is Kenton going to get them? Uh, it's, it's show me time this, this week in the, in the area, that's for sure. It is absolutely show me time. Let's run through our broadcast schedule really quick. Kenton OG, Friday night, 11 p.m. on WOSN. That kicks off the schedule. Friday on WTLW, following the 75-minute sports report, it's that Anna Marion local game that Mark just referenced. Saturday, doubleheader starting at 7, Perry Waynesfield, Goshen, nice NWCC matchup, followed by that big one, two 5 and 0s in the track, Lima Senior hosting Finley. And we'll have you up to date for the entire week six schedule and, of course, that 75-minute sports report on Friday night. For Mark Miller, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time on Mark's Madness.